Welcome everyone to another episode of The Present Show. And today we, our special guest is Nancy Siegel, who is the owner of Nancy Siegel Consulting. And she is an expert when it comes to mindfulness and working with teachers and students and younger individuals. So we're gonna pick your brain today. You're gonna share your story, give us some nice practices and it'll be a great learning experience for everyone. Thanks so much for being with us, Nancy. So I combine my passion for working with children specifically through the social emotional lens and yoga and I became certified to teach kids yoga, which I did for about 15 years. Uh, I was able to really uh, use the yoga component, specifically the mindfulness piece of yoga, to make a difference in children's lives. I started to teach uh, teachers these tools and techniques that, the, that these children were finding very empowering and that were helping them. Yoga, social learning, emotional learning, masters in education. Are you still learning? Absolutely. I hope for the rest of my life. And that's uh, one of the things I stress in my t teacher trainings that, you know, that we get this spark that's lit inside of us and we hopefully become lifelong continuous uh, learners. So I have to practice what I, what I preach. So yes, and, and I highlight the word practice. It's a practice every day for the rest of your life. The kids in general are really well, well distracted and they usually are uh, in an kind of continuous unresting uh, state, right? They always want to do something, keep moving. They, they can never stop and, except when they sleep, right? What is the first thing you would you know, recommend to a parent how to um, you know, start teaching them how to realize this, slow down a bit, and all the rest that is coming forward? This is a really good entry point for any age. I've done this with ages three or even a little younger through high school, and it's this. So it's, it's called a Hoberman sphere, but I like to call it a breathing ball. So we just, I just take it out and we just breathe together. So let's, let's just do that. We'll take three breaths together. So we'll inhale, hold, and exhale. And again, inhale, hold, and exhale, and one more. So it's a it's a great visual, mm -hmm. and you know, any anybody and everybody can do this. Once once you have this visual in your in your mind, you can almost pretend that it's there. So it's a it's a great thing to do with uh, with children. You know, if you have it, and if you don't have it, after you've taught it to them, say, okay, let's pretend we have a breathing ball. So the answer to your question is the best way I think to start teaching these tools is to model them. Is there any skepticism or criticism or walls coming up when you're trying to introduce these, these concepts? And what do you do to break those walls? Because I really know the benefits of mindfulness and I've seen so many success stories and I know the science behind it, the brain science. and. Uh, you know, this is not that new agey, crunchy granola stuff anymore. I mean, this, there's, this is evidence-based and um, there's lots of research to support this. So, so what, knowing all of that and feeling it deep in my heart that this makes a difference, I, meet, I try to meet people where they are. When a child is in meltdown, it's, there's, they're not broken, right? They just need help and they need to know that you're the loving, supportive adult who is going to help them. And mindfulness techniques can be those things that can help them so that then the next time it happens, to be able to ride those emotions and not get scared of them because, because the, you have to feel like I have a, an inner toolbox to help myself when things get big and out of control. Uh, is there a, a moment where anger is... And uh, is, is allowed? Uh, when I had my camp, the kids were, you know, like it, camp is fun, right? So the energy is high. Mm -hmm. 
but it's sometimes that energy, it gets high and it escalates, especially when it's ADHD energy. I used to say that energy was like a cyclone, you know, it starts low and then it, and then it goes like this and it takes everything with it. And, and then the giggles come out and then, it, you know, they, then they're out of control. So I had that in my camp a couple times, <laughs> but one of the times that it happened, there was just no way for them to really self-regulate without having the trusted adult, you know, the, who had created a loving, nurturing, safe environment, get angry at them and uh, angry at their behavior make a big distinction. I wasn't mad at them. You know, I was angry that the situation had escalated. So I had everybody sit down and I became the alpha. I stood up. So the kids were low. I was high. And I chose my words very carefully and loudly. I was very, I, you know, I was loud. And I said, and, it, and it, I said, you're not used to hearing me talk like this. I'm feeling angry right now. And then I would say, does anybody know why? And, you know, then we had a discussion about it. Um, so, yeah, the, I think the, the, I mean, that was controlled anger and because I did my own work. I used my own calming techniques before I, I did that. So I think if we can sort of manipulate the, the anger, right, and, and use it in a positive way, which sounds kind of, a, you know, contradictory, I think it can be effective. Mm -hmm. What's sort of the, the future or current upcomings when it comes to, to, to mindfulness in, in education and in the work that you're doing? So I'm hoping that all schools, you know, that will jump on board from, from the early ages, you know, from early childhood, and will, will lay the foundation for the standards of what each school will, uh, will adhere to. So meaning that, that starting in the, with the youngest class, which is usually in America, it's like th it's three years old, usually, so that the three-year-olds are taught about a breathing ball, taught about, you know, I have a whole bunch of things here, taught all of these uh, relatively easy to learn tools. Mm -hmm. And then they'll take them with them to the, when they're four and then five. And then so by the time the kids are 17, everybody in the school will have the same toolbox so that children's well-being will be ta taken as uh, will be considered equally if not more important than their academic success uh, tony wagner at harvard says that this is the first time in the field of education we don't know what we're preparing children for so that's why i think mindfulness has such a huge impact right now because we don't know where they're going to be when they when they finish with us, you know, in school when they're done with us. But we do know that wherever they are, if they have an inner resilience, if they have an inner inner strength, if they have strategies to help themselves with whatever they face, that they will do. They will be much more successful. Thank you so much, Nancy, for sharing with us, and thank you for being in the present show. Uh, I wish a lot of uh, more and more uh, people and little ones to hear uh, from your voice and your teachings. Definitely is um, life changing to, you know, start so early with mindfulness. And um, yeah, talk to you soon, perhaps in another show when you will have uh, uh, more stories to tell us. Looking forward. I would love that. Thank and you so much.